Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Rachel Ray here. Today I'm going to do an absolute beginner's guide to diamond painting part two. In this part I'm going to focus mainly on square diamond paintings because it was highly requested in the last video. So thank you all so much for watching and commenting on that last one and if you're renew here and you don't know what I'm talking about I will put a link up in the eye there. So check out that video first. You know how to place diamonds, but you might be feeling a little bit uneasy when it comes to squares, but I have something to share with you. You do not have to worry. There is nothing that special about it in comparison to round diamond paintings. So we're going to get down and we're going to look at the diamonds and we're going to look at the canvas. This diamond painting came to me. I will link the unboxing to that video somewhere up in the, the eye or down in the description below this video. This diamond painting company sent me an inventory sheet which came with the diamonds and you can see here that there's a picture or a schematic of what the diamond painting picture is looking like. It has all the symbols that you can find on the canvas. The color number, this is the DMC colors. How many diamonds I need to complete the painting and how many bags. You can see all the check marks here. I actually have um, checked the inventory for this painting and so I know that I have all the diamonds. Um, don't mind the D thing. <laughs> don't worry about that. Okay, so that is going to be helpful if you want to use this to kit up your diamond painting, but that's not necessary. This is an absolute beginner's guide. So you get the kit. What do you do now? Well, first you need to take out your diamonds. Sometimes they come in little baggies like this. Sometimes they come in Ziploc bags like this. Okay. But either way, it's still the same principle. You have the diamonds, they are labeled, they have the numbers on the bags. Sometimes it's hard to see, <laughs> admittedly, but this will tell you what color number those are. All you need to do is to match up that color. For example, 904 is this color. 904 is the plus symbol on this canvas. So when I peel this back, I'm looking for the plus symbol, which is just up here. So let's go ahead, move the diamonds and get down to the canvas itself. Now this right here is a little bit of a problem. I peeled back the cover paper on my diamond painting and I noticed that I have all of these little bubbles, these long bubbles under the canvas. Can you see how that's raised up? When I press it, it kind of has a little bit of air in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to score this so that the glue sticks to the canvas. If you don't do this step, it will still, the drills will still stick to the canvas, but they won't actually lie flat. So when you go to hang it on your wall and you know, you walk past the painting, you will see where this bubble is underneath all of your drills. So it's very important to get rid of this while you can. So I'm just going to do that very quickly. All right, so now I've gone ahead and I've cut all of these bubbles, but they're still kind of raised up on the canvas. I'm not sure if you can see that here, but I have sliced them. So all the air is out, but there's still a bit of a, a raised edge here. Now I'm going to use, you can either use the X-Acto knife itself or you can use something else. I'm going to use something else because I don't want to ruin it. This right here is a square toolkit from Evermoment on AliExpress. So what I'm going to do is use the pen to squish down that glue. Okay, everybody, I finished squishing down the rivers on the glue. That is what I call a river or a bubble. So in my other videos, if you hear me talk about especially unboxing videos. If you hear me talking about rivers and bubbles, that is what I'm talking about. And that is something that I really don't like, but it is easy to fix. And as you can see, there is one little part over there, which I need to fix, but anyhow, that's good enough. Let's just work on a smaller section today. 
Okay, everyone, so here we go. I have my toolkit ready, I have my baggies ready, and we are just going to start as if you've never ever diamond painted before. So please bear with me if you know how to diamond paint, this part probably isn't for you. I am going to reiterate what I talked about in my round video, the first diamond painting beginner, absolute beginner video, but I would like to do it again with squares because they do need to be placed a little bit differently and some people might find it before they find the other video. So bear with me. So you need to get your diamond painting drill tool. So either the pen or the tweezers. Now I am not a tweezers person, but there are people out there who are very talented and they can use tweezers to pick up their drills. I will attempt it in a few minutes, but this is the most common tool. It is the diamond painting drill pen. This is kind of the, um, the Cadillac of pink pens, uh, that you get with kits, but it is the same thing. It just has a squishy on it, which is something that I need today. So this is my little plate of wax and you just dip this in just like so. And if you would like to multi-place with it, you can dip in your three placer as well. There's also six, nine. There's a lot of different types of diamond multi-placers. I do have a video on multi-placers. If you would like to check it out, I will link it down below this video to help you out. I have a whole playlist on how to diamond paint. Please check it out if you have any questions or if you have more questions, please leave them in the comment section of this video. Now let's get closer. Everyone is a little bit different on how they like to diamond paint. For me, I like to go from the majority color to the minority color, meaning if I look at this square, what I see is that the right hand parentheses symbol is probably the most prominent alongside the plus sign. So I'm looking around and I'm saying, okay, which one do I want to start with first? Which one doesn't cause me a headache first? Another reason why I do that is because when I start a new section, if you start with the small colors, the, like for instance, number eight or number one or the equal sign, there's only a few of them. So you're hunting and pecking for those where you could just be glossing over the entire section and picking it up right away. You can see that the plus, the parentheses, then maybe the question mark and so on and so on. Go with the my majority first and then the minority just so that you can get the section done quicker and also so that you don't stick to your canvas. <laughs> That's also very important. So we are gonna start with parentheses. So let us go over. If we look over here, pull this back. We can see that there's actually two different parentheses. So there's the left one and the right one. So we need the right one, which is DMC number 905. So if we move it back over, 905 is right here. It's this color, beautiful green color. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my scissors. If you are a true beginner, you may not have any kind of storage systems or anything like that. So you can work straight from the baggies. You don't need to have fancy tools. So I've got one bag of 905. I'm gonna cut it open. And put it into my tray. Oops. Sometimes they go flying, that's normal. Okay, I'll pick up that one as well. Now comes the shaking. I'm gonna zoom you out a little bit. That may not be the best example of a good shake because a lot of these diamonds are actually stuck together a little bit. They can be knocked off or knocked apart. There's no problem there. I'll show you how to do that later. Let's get to diamond painting. So. So 
I'm going to start in the corner. We've got our drill pen ready to go. All we need to do, and I find this is very important, if you want to go one at a time, which is what I recommend when you're beginning, is you want to pick it up from the top of the drill, like so, and then you're going to try to align it with the symbol. So I'm going to zoom you in even further. When you're starting, it can take a little bit of time, but don't be discouraged. It's quite easy. Now, I like to do it in what we call a checkerboard pattern because if you skip every other symbol, it means that they will fit into place a lot better when you go back to do the second round. It also kind of gives your mind a little game to play while you're diamond painting. So I could place next to that diamond, no problem. But if you're in a big area, let's say, for example, I'll move it over here. Okay, we've got this big, big area of parentheses. So if I start from the very top here, and then I sk skip one, and I keep doing that all the way along, It'll make it more fun to go back and fill in then. Also, if you do it this way, it means you don't have to concentrate so hard on the diamonds looking perfect. You don't have to think about, oh, I got stuck. This is why I like to cover the other side of the paper. Let me go ahead and cut. I'll show you what I'm doing. So I'm going to cut this paper. And that way I won't get stuck. This is the other reason why I start from left to right because I like to keep my hand on the paper. <laughs> I should have done that earlier. Okay, where were we? So, that just makes it more fun for me anyway, to fill in all those little spaces. And if I want to go one by one, that's what I do. But I like to work quickly on diamond paintings. So I like to use my multi-placer. Let's Let's look. Okay, so we've got ones that are going across like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my tray to align with the diamond painting. Okay, And then I'm, I've got my multi-placer end here. I'm just going to pick up three. See how easy that was? And then I'm going to align it. I just use the side this side and align it with the line closest to me. Pick up three and then put them down. Just looking at the line closest to me. Now if you want to, you can do it vertically as well, but I hope that you can see. Let me zoom you out a little bit. So my tray is horizontal. My diamonds are horizontal. I pick up my diamonds horizontally, but then to turn them I either turn my wrist or I have to turn the pen. Turn the pen. Make sure you turn the pen or you will hurt your wrist. So please be gentle on your body. Make it easier for your body. Don't keep turning your wrist or you'll, you know, start to get really sore. And that's another thing I'd like to talk about is posture while diamond painting or tips and things to stay nice and, you know, healthy while you're diamond painting because 
it's something that I know I sit down it for hours and hours <laughs> to do. So. Oh, see how that didn't lie down all the way? All you need to do is use your pen and pop them in like so. Okay, let's try the tweezers. <laughs> now, you're going to watch me fail miserably. I've heard that in order to use tweezers, you should align your tray vertically. This is going to be so difficult. Okay. Oh my God, where do I put them? I picked up too many. I did it, but I picked up too many. Are there any two vertically? You're probably shouting at me right now. Oh, there. Oh, uh, I dropped them. Well, that's a good thing because I can pick them back up. See, I'm not prepared. My brain doesn't work for tweezers. <laughs> Whereas with the pen, it stays sticky. But if you use tweezers, you don't need the pink wax. So there are benefits to both. I know my mom really loves to use tweezers. So I'll give it a go. It is nice. I just feel like um, in my wrist it's causing a little bit of tension so I'm conscious of that kind of stuff <laughs> I know how long I can sit here and diamond paint for and I've done it for many many hours at a time so let's just quickly talk about what to do in this situation where you have these diamonds which are all clumped together so I'm gonna put down the cover paper <laughs> to protect that sticky area while we do this. I have some green trays that came in other kits. This is the most common drill tray to get from a diamond painting kit. So I'm going to stick all these little diamonds into that tray. I have a second one and I'm going to stick that on the top and then press. Okay, and oops, there's some stuck to the bottom. And if you can see, there's only a few still stuck together here, so I'm gonna do it again. Now, most of these diamonds are now unstuck. And you can carry on with your diamond painting. There are other things that you can use. There's other tools that are available out there. I've heard that the prescription bottle with the nickel in it works really well. Or if you're the kind of person that likes little accessories, there are things like this out there. So this is the Archer's Arts Diamond Painting Drill Grinder. This will, this will separate the drills. So if you have, for instance, Okay, these are the only ones that are left clumped together in this group. So you just stick the, the top on top of them and then gently grind it. There we go. And that is that. I think there's only two left that are clumped together and that is actually really nice. So that is what you can do to fix your diamonds which are stuck together. Now if you wanted to, if you don't have a container, you could simply put these back in the bag that they came in. And use a piece of scotch tape to close the bag and that way it still has the number on the bag and you know exactly what color it goes to. However, if you're the kind of person that likes to work on multiple colors at once, you could always label your tray with the number and put it to the side. This works best if you don't have kids or children though. 
I'm going to go ahead and get the second color that's very predominant in this painting, and that is the plus sign. If I go over to the side and look, doo -doo -doo, that is 904. So we're going to grab that color next. That one should be just one shade different. And we're going to do the same thing again. I'm just going to cut the bag off. I'm going to open the bag. empty it into a drill tray and repeat and this is just how I diamond paint if it's a small kit there's no need at all to have to kit up everything get into you know your storage containers or anything like that it's only when you have really big projects that I would recommend that so again I'm just going to show the method one more time but first I'm seeing some drills I don't like. Okay, let me show you up close. Whoops. Some of the diamond painting drills have holes on the top of them. And to be honest with you, I don't really like those ones. So I'm going to take a tray and just pull those suckers out. I don't want, oh, and that one's not the right color. I don't like to have holes on my diamond painting. Okay, so this time I'm going to turn my tray vertically and I'm going to do the multi-placer. This time I'm going to multi-place with the checkerboard method. So I skip one and then go to the next. Now this is not a very big diamond painting, so I'm pretty much done. Though you could keep going, you could just pick up two at a time, like so. But then when you go to fill in, it's much easier to guide the drills into that spot. And it goes very, very quick that way. Then if you want to go horizontal, just turn your tray. You can place your drills any which way you want whatever feels good to you. The, the idea though at the end of the day is just that you enjoy it. Go slow and enjoy the process. Please don't feel the need to rush. Sometimes we get overwhelmed and feel like, oh well, I need to get this done for this occasion or you know, it's, it, we love making these as gifts for people so we want to have them done by a deadline. But actually, it's, it's supposed to be relaxing, so please take your time and enjoy it. Hey everybody! So really quick before we finish this video because I've been working here for a few hours and believe it or not it's only like four o'clock and it looks like it's seven. <laughs> so I apologize about the lighting but it's my day off. So I'm nearly finished with this section now and I just wanted to kind of recap what's going on. So I was putting all my trash drills into this tray here just on the side, you know, the way you do it. Um, and so anything that has like little bubbles or little tabs on the side, I just threw them in here because I don't want them on my painting. These are all the colors that I've used so far. And I was like, mm, I'm not going to put tape on the top of them yet because I don't want to close them up. And then I was like, what am I doing? So once you get a few diamond paintings, you're probably going to get these little kind of baggies and uh, they come with some of the toolkits and stuff. So you could use these to put your bags into. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier, but I guess I was thinking, well, maybe I'll just do the whole thing at once, but that's kind of, yeah, that's not going to happen today. But I was like, okay, here's these like little bags that come in the toolkit. So what I was thinking was just get a piece of an index card. Um, like these are normal standard index cards. If you cut them in half, 
and then you cut them again into thirds roughly I mean there's no need to be like super precise about this part then you can take and write the DMC number and the symbol on the little card so let's do like I've got a few symbols left in here so I've got nine two and three uh, number two is 523 so if I write 523 and then the symbol is number two so I'll put that at the top um, you can stick it in the bag so if you if you go like this it opens it really easy and then stick it in there and then I gotta find it okay 523 is right over here in my boat then I'm gonna dump one out oops too many and then put the rest in the bag like that and then I can get rid of the flimsy little bag and stick one of these onto the canvas Ta-da! and the cool thing is that I mean this takes very little time to do so for me today what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open another little section and as I'm putting them onto the canvas I can stick them in the little baggie and do the inventory and storage while I'm at it and so far so good guys I think this is actually turning out really nice considering it's a 20 by 25 you know uh, the shine is really good and everything but I'm gonna keep working and I will see you all in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this. And like I said, if you have any questions at all, please, please, please leave them in the comments section because I will address them in my next video and I'll make sure to give you a little credit. I'm gonna do the whole thing at the bottom and everything. So thank you all so much for being here and watching my videos. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you all in my next one. Take care guys, bye.